Good morning. Can everyone hear me okay? It's the best I can do. Uh, today we're here because we're talking about a very important subject. Uh, in this post-9-11 world that we live in, um, of course our country has changed, which means our county has changed. And that means that our approach to law enforcement has changed. Um, in, our, in this particular case, we're going to talk about something that's happened in our county. Uh, some other folks are going to fill in some additional details. Uh, but I just want to make a few comments. Uh, we don't know what the suspect's intentions were in this case, but we do know that the destructive devices could have caused severe devastation. I'm thankful for the police and fire departments for being leaders in public safety. Our astute police officers and fire officials went the extra mile because something just didn't feel right. Today we are seeing unprecedented collaboration between fire and police and of course with ATF as well. It is because of them that potentially lives were saved in Anne Arundel County from a suspect who had the capability of causing destruction and terror in our county. It's hard to believe that this is the case today, but it is, and uh, we will always proceed with an abundance of caution. And with that, I turn it over to Chief Cox. Thank you. Um, I just want to echo the county executive's uh, statements. Uh, this was truly a successful uh, investigation. There was a tremendous amount of collaboration, and uh, we enjoy a great relationship with our county police department, our federal partners, as well as our mutual aid partners, and the bomb squad from Annapolis City that was there to help us. Um, in addition to that, there was extraordinary efforts done by the first arriving patrol officers, as well as the EMTs that arrived on the scene. Um, this call actually began as just a typical service call for the police department. Uh, they had uh, responded for a uh, request for assistance call. Uh, when they arrived, the things they seen uh, kind of raised flags with them. They had requested the uh, fire department to respond for an injured person. And uh, not only did the patrol officers at that time begin to uh, ask some questions and start an, an initial investigation in search of the area, our fire department EMTs who transported the patient realized that the injuries this individual suffered was a potential blast injury. So uh, with that uh, kind of raised flags and notifications came almost simultaneously both through the police department to our fire investigators as well as through the fire department to our own fire investigators. So uh, once the fire investigators arrived on the scene, they were uh, able to uh, locate and look at, examine the unknown chemicals that were found. Um, they also developed information that led them to a second residence in the Glen Burnie area. Uh, when they went to the second residence, they applied for a search warrant, and during a search of that residence, they were able to get uh, more than 100 pounds of chemicals uh, that were identified as components of uh, destructive and explosive materials. They found numerous destructive devices. They found components used to construct de uh, destructive devices, as well as numerous weapons and uh, uh, some amounts of controlled dangerous substance and some packaging material. They also found some explosive and bomb making uh, manuals. Uh, as you heard the county executive say, the suspect's intent is really unknown. He's uh, unclear, he's not cooperating with the investigators. However, uh, what is clear is that these materials were capable of maiming, injuring, or killing human beings. Uh, we all live in a post 9-11 era and uh, today is proof that our communities here in Anne Arundel County are not immune or no different than Boston, Massachusetts, Aurora, Colorado, or Newtown, Connecticut. Uh, but what is important to note is that our first responders in this case applied their training, they functioned with a keen awareness, uh, due diligence, and they worked in a collaborative effort to prevent a domestic terrorist incident from occurring in our communities. So uh, with that, I'd like to turn it over to Chief Davis. Thank you, uh, Chief Cox and, and Ms. Newman. In our post-9-11 world, a, a number of international and domestic terror threats have been thwarted thanks to the diligent federal, state, and local public safety efforts over the past decade plus now. Uh, and as sophisticated as law enforcement has become over the last uh, decade, the detection of potential perpetrators and their plots to harm our communities typically fall on the shoulders of a uniformed patrol officer responding to what appears to be a routine call for police service. 
Uh, last week, Sergeant Rob Price, Corporal Doyle Holquist, and Corporal Mark Gass, and I think we're joined in the back by these <coughs> first responders today, thank you all for coming, uh, located suicidal Todd Wheeler and became suspicious of his story, suspicious of his injuries, and suspicious of his distinct chemical odor. Uh, they then summons intelligence and narcotic detectives to the scene to further explore this unusual circumstance. Our 9-11 call taker, uh, Mary McCormick, spent a great deal of time on the telephone with our initial caller, and our dispatcher, Amanda Marcio, who I think Amanda is joining us today, just did a wonderful job uh, speaking to many folks on the phone to, to really get these efforts underway, and they played key roles. Uh, before long, the fire department, uh, ATF, Annapolis City Bomb Squad were, were on the scene collaborating with uh, the police department, and this investigation was in high gear. Todd Wheeler had the very real potential to harm our community. The commitment and collaboration described earlier by County Executive Newman and Police Chief Cox are very real, tangible things in Anne Arundel County. And today, uh, we gather to uh, not only describe to, to you what happened, but to, to really chalk one up here for the good guys. Thank you. I think I'm going to turn it over to Assistant Special Agent in Charge, Steve Pugmire from the ATF. Good morning. I'd like to first thank uh, Anne Arundel County Executive Lauren Newman, Fire Chief uh, Cox, and uh, Chief Davis, but especially the firefighters and investigators from Anne Arundel County that are here today. Uh, ATF continues to value its partnerships uh, with its local law enforcement and fire uh, departments, especially Anne Arundel County. And uh, it's these partnerships that we have that help us to team with them to make our communities safer. Uh, today, after almost a week-long investigation, I'm pleased to report that Anne Arundel County Fire and Police Investigators, as well as ATF Special Agents, successfully executed a joint investigation regarding Todd Wheeler and his possession of multiple suspected destructive devices and destructive device components. It's because of ATF's historical partnerships with departments like Anne Arundel County that ATF was able, able to clearly communicate and quickly work to stop Wheeler before others in the community could be harmed by these devices. During what would traditionally be a, a holiday week, ATF was able to dispatch not only special agents, but subject matter experts like certified explosive specialists, uh, explosive enforcement officers, forensic chemists, to quickly assess and proceed with the investigation. It also should be noted that our ATF National Laboratory, which is located just down the road in Ammondale, played a significant role in this investigation. And as a result, ATF's resources and its partnership with Chief Cox and Chief Davis, uh, we were able to, to make sure that uh, Wheeler was in custody and we were able to charge him with state charges. Uh, as ATF moves forward with Anne Arundel investigators, we're going to be working with the United States Attorney, Attorney's Office to determine whether or not federal charges are warranted. ATF will remain determined and committed to investigate explosive crime and remove alleged criminals like Wheeler from the streets of Anne Arundel County and in order to make it and other communities in Maryland a safer place. Thank you. Uh, we can take a couple questions if, uh, if there's anything specific you'd like to know. I have a, a question about the logistics of this. The 911 call came in from Millersville and then Wheeler was at Millersville, or was he in Herondale when he? Where was he? Where was he located before he was taken hospital? The original call was for a call to the police department for service, and that was uh, located in Millersville. Okay. Uh, and that's where the uh, suspect was picked up by the fire department personnel, okay. also for for the injury and transported to the hospital. It was at the Millersville site that information was developed by the investigators that, that led them to a second residence in the Glen Burnie area. And now at the residence in Millersville, was there, um, in addition to the information, was there um, um, actual materials there? Uh, there, there was some, there was some uh, an undisclosed amount of chemicals that were located by the initial patrol officers, mm -hmm. the intelligence divisions of the police department, and our fire investigators. Thank you. So, two things. Uh, you had said that, that he had evidence of a blast injury. Was there actually an explosion somewhere? Uh, he did have evidence of a blast injury. It was basically the burns and the uh, type of injury he sustained 
uh, to particular extremity. Okay, so was there a blast somewhere, or was this from a chemical reaction? We don't know. We are. Uh, EMTs looked at that as a potential blast incident. That's what raised flags and uh, caused the reporting uh, on the fire side. And when you say destructive devices were found, are we talking about like a pipe bomb? What, what's a destructive device? Well, this is still an active and ongoing investigation. Um, I have Captain Howarth here from our fire uh, marshal's office, who was the lead investigator in this case, as well as uh, Investigator Spriggs from Annapolis City's bomb squad. Um, they've provided examples up on the table of what some of the destructive devices look like. And uh, they'll be, you know, he'll be able to, if need be, to describe that in more detail to you. Flare launcher, a destructive device, or did he build a bomb with the uh, with the chemicals there? Uh, Bob, you want to answer? The flare launcher in itself is not a destructive device. However, from the evidence that we uncovered, he was making modifications that the flare launcher could have then been used with destructive devices. The destructive devices that we found. Destructive device is the term that we use. It's the legal term for charging. Yes, he was making bombs and he was making explosives. We can't determine at this point exactly what he was doing until we get through with all of the laboratory analysis. That's why it's so early in the investigation to say that they are potential destructive devices pending laboratory analysis. Did, did you find materials that would um, allow him to learn how to do this? Were there manuals? Were there... Yes, you can actually see right up on the desk here, there's uh, some of the manuals that were there. Is it Any? okay if we don't know what his intentions were? Is it safe to say, though, that he was trying to harm more than himself? It, it, what it's safe to say right now is we don't know what his intentions were, but whatever his intentions, the investigation prevented that from happening and prevented people from being injured. From your investigation so far, have you learned anything as to... Uh, uh, how long he'd been working with these materials, uh, where he got them from, anything like that? That's still under investigation at this time. Do you believe that he was acting alone? Uh, that's still under investigation, but we have nothing that indicates anything but him at this point. Okay. Based on the components you have here, is there any approximation of a blast radius of potential blast? Uh, about 50 yards okay. as a radius. So it would have taken out the house and the surrounding houses. The potential was there for that. It doesn't mean that each device would do that. It means that the potential is there to have that sort of a blast radius. I'm wondering where the investigation goes from here if you're going through like computer files or anything to try to determine a motive. It's way too early to say exactly where it's going to go. We're, we're in the initial stages of the investigation, and we have a lot of work to do, and we don't want to necessarily give away all of the information that we'll be doing in that investigation. Captain, what's your first name? Robert. I just want to make a comment along those lines. Uh, it is still very early in the investigation. This has only happened days ago, but we felt it was important to be as open and transparent in the process as we can be at the same time not jeopardizing the investigation. So we want to be candid and put the information out there. This is something significant that's happened in our community, and it's because of the hard work of the folks in public safety in Anne Arundel County that we avoided a potential disaster certainly a potential terrorist uh, uh, attack or harm to citizens of our county. We can't really, at this point, quantify how severe or dangerous it might have been because the investigation continues. What we do know is that uh, it was something to be taken very seriously. We got on the front end of it, and uh, we will uncover all the details uh, in due time, and we'll continue to make them available to you as we're able to as the, as the investigation continues. What have you been able to determine about the suspect, either his mental state, or is this somebody that had a fervent religious belief, was a militia type person? Do you know anything about him? Uh, he is um, he is being evaluated, and uh, I think it would be inappropriate to comment beyond that. Like a psychiatric evaluation? Uh, I, I'd rather not comment on his uh, state of mind. Uh, it would be too soon for that. As we have more information that we can make public, we will. Is he being held in a jail or at a hospital? Uh, at the present time, he's being held uh, in a jail. Chief Was, Cox, um, what about the house itself and the safety of the neighborhood? And is like anybody go back inside the house or talk to me about the security of, of that street? Um, our crews, uh, along with the Naples City Bomb Squad ATF, were able to uh, render the dwelling safe. Is anybody else living in the dwelling at this point, or is it? Um, I'm not exactly sure at this time. And again, it's still an active investigation. Was, do you believe that he was living in the house alone? Uh, 
would rather not divulge that information okay. at this time, again, due to being an active investigation. Was Mr. Wheeler Jr. the only person detained in this investigation? Not at the present time, he is the only one that has been detained and charged. However, again, it's still an active and ongoing investigation. It's in the early stages. So thank you guys for your questions. Appreciate it.